There's a duck up here. A duck. Okay. Don't know what don't know quite what to make of a duck. Oh, uh, yeah. I hope that's not a comment on my preaching, because you know anything that's associated with the duck is not top quality. So, did y'all get my message this week? Okay. Maya Koopa. I'm taking responsibility for that. I recorded that message and I tried to set it so that it would go out at a decent time on Friday. Didn't do too good, did I? Um, the software that we used to create this, uh, I kept trying to tell it to schedule it for a later date. And I didn't know when you hit the button, it was going to automatically schedule it. I thought I could set the time, stuff like that. So I kept hitting the buttons like, why won't it let me set the time? Hey, I got, it woke me up too, okay? I was sleeping in Saturday morning, it woke me up too. So I am sorry. From here on out, if this ever happens again, Blame Ed. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Welcome, thank you for choosing to worship with us here at New Home Baptist today. It is so nice to see you. If you're visiting with us, I hope that people have made you feel warm and welcome. We are a place where people come to find God, not to be judged, not to be looked upon, but to help each other in our quest to understand and to do the work and the will of our Lord. Thank you for being here today. I would invite you today to take your Bibles and to turn to our scripture passage for the day. Today's message is based on the Gospel of Mark. So please take a moment with your Bible or the Bible from the pew rack in front of you and turn to the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. We will be looking today at Mark chapter 10, and I will be beginning in verse 17. Beginning in verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running, and kneeled to him, and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may, that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these I have observed from my youth. Would you pray with me? Father God, Lord, we thank You for today. Lord, we thank You for the privilege of coming into Your house and approaching You today. Thank You, dear God, that we have like-minded believers and like-minded friends and family who are here today to seek You and to seek Your will. I pray, dear God, that You would continue to bless us today. You have given us so much, and we sit here asking for more. Lord, we enjoy the weather, we enjoy the fine house, we enjoy the things You give us, but we pray today that You would give us something even greater than all of this. We pray that You would give us Your will and Your understanding. Help us today, dear God. Help us to understand how You would have us live. Speak to us, dear God. Show us the path that you would like us to take. Open our eyes, dear Lord, so that we may see the opportunities that you have placed before us. Father, as I stand here, I pray that you would push me aside and that your words for your people would flow. We are here today, God, because we love you. We are here to honor you. We are here to praise you. And we are here to seek You. Reveal unto us today, dear Lord, that which You would have us know. 
so that we may go forth and be the people you have called us to be. Come now, dear God, bless our time with you. In your Son's name we pray, amen. So I have a question for y'all today. What's the difference between good and good enough? What's the difference between good and good enough? Anybody want to venture out this morning? Good enough isn't as good as good, okay. Figured that would come from my wife. What is good is what is right. Now, the perfect example I can think of this is a couple of months ago when we went on our kayak trip. As we left the church, guess who was in charge of tying the kayaks down? Me. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. There's a proper way, a good way to tie things, and then there's the not-so-good way, or the way I like to refer to it as my way to tie things down. Now, someone who has had training knows how to tie all of these special knots. And, you know, talking to some of you people, especially you Navy and Coast Guard people, there's a knot for everything, isn't there? I don't know these things. You know what I do when I have to tie a knot? I just start putting the rope together until it's all gone. Does that work out the best way? No. When we were, dra- when we were traveling down to our put-in point on the river, I noticed that one of the kayaks that I'd put up there wasn't exactly as stable as it needed to be. Well, thankfully, in my truck was an ex-Coast Guard and an ex-Navy man. That's really why we pulled over to tie it. I knew I wouldn't have to do it. They got out, and Mitchell, I believe it was you who tied it down. And just for the record, I came really close to cutting that thing because I could not untie it. They knew how to do the job right. They knew how to do the job the way it was supposed to be done. They did a good job. They tied the knot, whatever specific knot that was that they tied, and it worked. Unlike me, when I tie something, it's just, and I hope it sticks. Is good ever, is good enough ever as good as good? Good enough is never as good as good. So I have to ask this question of y'all today. Why do so many people try to be good enough? Why do so many people try to be good enough? Let's take a moment and take a look at what's going on in this scripture passage that we just read. What happened right before this is that Jesus had been dealing with people. Jesus' answers and the way that He carried Himself had impressed someone who was following Jesus. There were many people who followed Jesus because many people realized that Jesus was a good teacher. He knew the law better than anyone else. And the way that Jesus described and explained the law spoke to people. We see here that one of these followers has seen Jesus interact with children. He's seen Jesus interact with people who were supposedly experts in the law. And this man is impressed with what Jesus has to say. So Jesus goes on his way and this man comes running up before him. And he falls down on his knees. And what does this man say to Jesus? Good master. Good master. The young man is obviously well within his rights to call Jesus good master, isn't he? Jesus has demonstrated his knowledge of the law. Jesus has demonstrated his goodly way. But how does Jesus react to him? What does Jesus say to this young man? What is the first thing that he says? Why do you call me good? Wow. How many good people do you know? How many people do you know that think they're good? Yeah, a little bit different response there. Jesus asked this man, 
Why do you call me good? There is only one who is good, and who is that? God. Does this mean that Jesus wasn't good? Exactly, He is God. Somebody might take this phrase to say, you know, Jesus says that He's not good, He can't be God. Well, Jesus is God, and God is good, right? I'm going to break y'all into that one day. Ain't that right, Reed? Jesus is the manifestation of God on earth. But Jesus did not want to tell this man that. Jesus wanted this man to figure it out on his own, didn't he? Jesus, as he teached, wanted people to come to the realization on their own that he is who he says he was. Too many people say, believe because I told you. Jesus says, believe because of what you have seen and what I have taught. But I jump ahead of myself. Jesus said, only God is good. That's a pretty simple lesson, isn't it? Only God is good. Are any of us God? Do any of us think that we're God? Sometimes I think we do. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. None of us, no matter what we do, no matter how hard we try, no matter how hard, no matter how much effort we put into it, none of us will be good this side of heaven. Because no matter how hard we try, we are always going to be flawed, aren't we? No matter how good we are, there's always going to be a time when we mess up. There is none good but who? God. Then why do so many people say that they are good enough to get into heaven? You ever run across somebody like that? Pastor, I don't believe in God, but I'm a good person. He's not going to send me to hell. You ever hear that? You ever hear people say, well... I don't go to church and I don't read my Bible, but I'm a good person. That's going to be okay. Friends, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Hell is going to be full of good people. Just like heaven is going to be full of bad people. Being good is not what gets you into heaven. There is nothing that you can do on your own that is going to get you there, is there? doesn't work like that. We can do nothing on our own to overcome the sin in our lives. We can do nothing on our own to make payment for the sin that we have committed. Y'all been keeping up with your Bible reading? Is anybody else as confused as I am about what kind of animal you offer for what kind of sin you've done? Those of you who aren't following, we're in Leviticus and it talks about that animal sacrifice that you do for the certain sin that you do. And all I can say is I hope those priests back there had a little cheat sheet when somebody came to them. It's like, oh, you did, uh, you lied about your neighbor and hopefully they pulled it out and said, oh, that's one turtle dove and one lamb. I have a hard time keeping up with it. When we sin, as I have said before, who do we hurt? We hurt ourselves, but moreover, we hurt God. When we sin, the price still has to be paid. Too many people out there think that they are smart enough. They think that they are capable. They think that if they just don't do any wrong, they're going to be okay. Well, friends, who out there has lived a perfect life? Jesus. How long can you go in your day without doing something wrong? Can we even get out of bed without doing something wrong? Not if you're married. (laughs) No. We are broken creatures. Every human that is ever born has sin in their lives. 
Every person that is ever born is in need of salvation. Every person who is born is stained with sin. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that little children, if they pass away before they can make a decision, that God judges them. My God is a just God, amen? God covers those and He judges those according to what they know. So when it comes to little babies and things like that, I firmly believe and I will preach to my dying day that God saves those. But there are people who know better. There are people that are old enough to know better and they still turn their back on God. They say that I do not need Him. They say that, oh, I go to church, or oh, I write a check, or oh, I do this and that. Does that really matter? Is that going to keep you out of hell? When you get to heaven, is God going to sit up there with a scorecard and say, okay, you did this, this, and this right, and you did this wrong, but that's okay, all your rights cancel out your wrong. Is that going to happen? Are we ever going to be good enough to get there on our own? And why do we people keep saying that I'm good enough as I am? I don't know about you, but I still need God in my life. I still need His direction. I still need His wisdom. And Lord knows I still need His forgiveness. I don't want to brag, but I am the pastor. I spend a lot of time in His Word. I spend a lot of time doing the things that He calls me to do. And I am still nowhere near good enough that I don't need Him. We Christians have got to stop fooling ourselves. And those of you out there who do not have a saving relationship with Jesus, you need to stop fooling yourselves as well. You go through life thinking that you are strong. You go through life thinking that you're independent. You go through life thinking there is nothing else. Well, friends, there is something after this life. And to those who believe, what awaits us is glorious and wonderful. Amen? But if you do not have a relationship with Christ, what awaits you is something too horrible to mention. If you think that you are good enough, you will never, ever know what you need to know. For there is one thing and one thing only that humanity can do that will save them. And that is accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Good Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, you know the commands. Don't commit adultery. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't cheat people. Honor your father and mother. And the man replied, I have done all these things since I was a young person. Look, if this guy is old enough to be out on his own and he's kept these commands ever since he was a small child, he's doing pretty good, isn't he? Let's be honest. If any of us said a little white lie this week, this guy's probably doing better than we are. Yet, what does Jesus tell him? There is still more that you need to do. For you see, this young man was very wealthy. And instead of relying on God, he relied on his wealth. How many of us out there are doing the Ten Commandments, are living our lives by the Ten Commandments, and not living them by God? How many of us have our own little checklist of what we're supposed to be doing? And instead of turning to God for guidance and turning to God for His wisdom, we go by our little checklist of what it means to be a good Christian. Am I speaking out of turn? Am I speaking the truth? Being the person God has called you to be is about being the person who listens to God. 
It is about trusting God with your everyday life. It is not about a list of rules that you have to follow. Rather, it is about the commitment that you have towards Him. So what's the point of all this? Christian, the point is very simple. My question to you today is, are you living for God or are you living for a list of rules and regulations that you have made up? Are you, Christian, still trying to be good enough and not relying on the grace of God? Are you being what God has called you to be? Or are you being what you want to be? You can never be good enough, Christian, until you completely trust in God. Now, I know some of you are out there and you're saying, you know, what's this guy talking about? I don't have a relationship with God. I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, to you, I have the most wonderful thing. I know that you're out there and you're searching for meaning. I know that you know that you have a hole in your soul. Because anyone who does not have God in their life has within them a yearning for something greater. And you have tried to fill that yearning with everything that the world has to offer. Maybe it's alcohol, maybe it's relationships, maybe it's drugs. But if you do not have God in your life, you have tried with all that you are to fill that hole with something that this world has to offer. And I'm going to go out on a limb here. If you have tried to fill that hole in your soul with something other than God, it has not turned out well for you, has it? If you have this yearning within you, That is God speaking to your heart. It is God saying that I love you and that you need me and that I want you to come in and I want to help you. You cannot do this on your own. You need help. And help is right there calling out to you. All you have to do today is say, I am willing, dear God, please help me now. I know, unbeliever, that it may be hard to put your faith into something that you do not see. We cannot always see God and we cannot always see His handiwork. But He is there. There are times when you cannot feel God. There are times even that we Christians feel that God is a little bit further away from us than we would like Him to be. But He's still there, isn't He? You may not see Him, and you may not feel Him, but friend, you can always trust Him, can't you? God has promised that He will never leave nor forsake us. So brother or sister, if you're out there today and you're struggling and you feel like you have a hole and you feel like you need something greater, God is here and God will take care of you and God will help you to find the purpose that you so desperately seek. I call upon you today, if you do not know Jesus, surrender your heart unto Him. It may be hard to begin with, But I promise you that as you get to know Him, your relationship with Him will grow and you will be grateful that you did. Reed is going to come now and lead us in our time of invitation. If God has been struggling with you, if you feel like you need something that you just cannot find, please come down here. Talk to me. I'd love to tell you more about Jesus. Christian, if you have been living a life according to your own rules and not the will of God, I would encourage you to come down here and to pray that God would help you to live the life that you have been called to live and not what you think. Too many of us are trying to be good enough. Too many of us are trying to be good all on our own. It ain't ever going to happen this side of heaven, is it? Maybe you need to come down here and tell God that and that you need Him. Read. Let's all stand. Take a hymn book and turn to page 330. 
Thank you all for coming out this morning. It's been so nice to be up here and to share with you the word that the Lord has told me to share. Please, come and join us again tonight. As we gather to worship, I think you'll be blessed by tonight's service. We're going to do something a little bit different, but I would love for you to come out. Don't forget, immediately following the worship service tonight, we'll be having our annual church business meeting. Um, please, there's information out there in the foyer if you'd like to get that and peruse it this afternoon so you'll be prepared for tonight. Love to have you come back and be part of our worship tonight. And don't forget, Wednesday night we're going to get back into Revelations, okay? Go out this week. Go out this week and live for the Lord. Okay? Will you do that? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for love. Thank you for your promise. And thank you for your grace. Thank you, dear Lord, for loving us in spite of all that we do. Help us, dear Lord, help us this week to live for you in all that we say, 
in all that we do and in all that we are. May we live for you, dear God, and not ourselves. In your Son's name we pray. Amen.